The diagonalization argument comes up in many contexts and is very useful for generating paradoxes and mathematical contradictions. To show how general the technique is, let's examine it in the context of English adjectives. Here I've created a table with English adjectives both as the rows and as the columns. Consider the row to be the word itself and the column to be the string representation of the word. For each entry, I've written a 1 if the row adjective applies to the column representation of the word. For instance, long is not a long word, so I've written a 0. Polysyllabic is a long word, so I've written a 1. French is not a French word, it's an English word, so I've written a 0, and so forth. So far, we haven't run into any problems. Now let's make the following definition. A heterological word is a word that expresses a property that its representation does not possess. We can add the representation of the word to the table without any problems. It is a long, polysyllabic, non-French word. But when we try to add the meaning to the table, we run into problems. Remember, a heterological word is one that expresses a property that its representation does not possess. Long is not a long word, so it is heterological. Polysyllabic is a polysyllabic word, so it is not heterological. French is not a French word, so it is heterological. In effect, we've taken the values along this diagonal and flipped them to create this row. What about heterological, however? If we say that this is heterological, causing us to put a 1 here, then it applies to itself so it can't be heterological. On the other hand, if we say that it is not heterological, causing us to put a zero here, then it doesn't apply to itself, and it is heterological. So there really is no satisfactory answer here. Heterological is not well defined as an adjective. For English adjectives, we tend simply to ignore the paradox and politely say that we can't answer that question. Even in mathematics, the polite response was simply to ignore such questions until around the turn of the 20th century, when philosophers began to look for more solid, logical foundations for reasoning, and for mathematics in particular. Naively, one might think that a set could be an arbitrary collection. But what about the set of all sets that do not contain themselves? Is this set a member of itself or not? This paradox, posed by Bertrand Russell, wasn't satisfactorily resolved until the 1920s with the formulation of what we now call zermelo frankel set theory. Or, from mathematical logic, consider the statement, this statement is false. If this statement is true, then it says that it's false. And if this statement is false, then it says so and should be true. It turns out that falsehood, in this sense, isn't well defined mathematically. At this point, you've probably guessed where this is going for this course we're going to apply the diagonalization trick to Turing machines.